In this day and age when so many meetings are online, there are some serious breaches of etiquette. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the do's and don'ts of virtual meetings. So much can get in the way of having an effective meeting these days online. So many distractions. I mean, it's hard enough to stay present and focused when everything is perfect. Then when you start to introduce problems to the equation, things just get way out of hand. So this video, I wanna share with you the five core categories, do's and don'ts of virtual meetings. The first category of do's and don'ts is equipment and technology. So first and foremost, if you're joining a meeting, use a computer. Do your very best not to have to join from a laptop or from an iPad. And if you must use an iPhone or an iPad, please do people the favor of turning your phone to its side so that you have a landscape format. Make sure that the camera that you're using is level with your eyes. Don't have a camera set up here or definitely don't have a camera set down here because then you get that horrible up your nose, double chin shot. Ideally, if you can, hardwire your internet connection so you're not subject to the fluctuations and ups and downs of a Wi-Fi network. Sound is one of the most important things when it comes to meeting quality. Now, even a little tiny sound that's distracting can ruin a whole meeting for some people. I used to have an employee who used a headset that was one of these um, iPhone headsets, and every time she moved, the thing would hit her earring or her collar, and it just drove everyone crazy. And since she couldn't hear it, it didn't drive her crazy. And it was one of these things that almost felt like it was rude because it was such a distraction in meetings when she was talking. The second category is setting and settings. So your setting, where you're sitting, where you have set up yourself for your virtual meetings is really important. First and foremost, make sure that you're well lit so that people can see you properly. If you're in front of a window, then you're gonna show up dark like a shadow to everybody watching. Another thing to pay attention to is what does your background look like? Make sure your background is attractive and that it's not messy or distracting. One of the best things that you can do is go onto Amazon and just buy a backdrop for yourself. That way, just any old plain background will do. You can really spruce it up with a cool background. One thing that I would not do is use the virtual backgrounds feature in Zoom. It's really distracting. Parts of you disappear when you move around and it's just, it gets in the way. I much prefer an actual physical attractive background than a virtual one. And while you're at it, why don't you place a do not disturb sign on your door so that people aren't knocking on your door or interrupting you in the middle of your meetings. In terms of your settings, which is part of setting and settings, please, for the love of God, mute yourself when you're not talking. There's nothing worse than hearing the background noise of 10 or 15 or 20 people while someone's trying to make a point. So do your part and mute yourself when you're not speaking. Unmute yourself when you're ready to share. The third category is hair, makeup, and dress. Now, you would think that this would be obvious, but actually it's not. I know from personal experience, sometimes people think that because they're taking meetings from home these days, that they should be wearing their pajamas and that they don't have to brush or comb their hair or clean their face. Well, I'm here to tell you that people notice and it drops the level of the meeting when people show up not professionally. So please don't look like you just rolled out of bed, pull a comb through that hair, brush your teeth, and if you need to, you can leave your yoga pants on. The fourth category is etiquette. Look at or near the camera when you're talking. I know it's weird and we all have a desire to look at the people that we're talking to but it makes such a difference when you look at or near the camera. People feel like you're really talking to them. So I have a little trick that I do. Whenever I have notes that I'm speaking from, I make the notes really small and put them right underneath the camera of my computer so that I'm looking at my notes and it looks like I'm looking at the camera instead. So like imagine if I were having a conversation with you and I'm looking down here at my notes the whole time and I don't feel like I'm connecting with you. That doesn't feel very good, does it? Another etiquette thing that I highly recommend is to join the meeting a couple minutes early. 
That way, if you have to reload your Zoom or download new software, or your camera is not working or whatever kinks you have to figure out, you can figure them out before their meeting starts. There are a few things more annoying than getting to a meeting ready to go and having five people having to figure out their technology, their audio and their video situation. Which brings me to another very obvious thing that a lot of people don't do. Please, please be present at your meetings. If you're going to be there, be there. Don't multitask. Don't try to do five other things. Don't think that just because you're on mute, we can't see you talking to other people. It's distracting. And yeah, you could turn off your video and not be a part of the meeting, but that's pretty annoying too. When you're someone who's leading a meeting and you know that five or 10 people are off of video, it's, you start to wonder what they're up to. So if you're going to be at a meeting, be there, focus and be present. Another thing that's really different about virtual meetings is how we interact with each other. In a real meeting, we can raise our hand or even interject. But in a virtual meeting with the lag time and with the special challenges of technology, that can be really intrusive and distracting. So use the raise hand feature and remember that there's a chat box there. So you can use the chat box to share any thoughts or insights you might have and to add to the conversation without interrupting it. The last category is number five, meeting leadership. If you're the one leading the meeting, then it's your responsibility to make sure that people have a great experience. So part of that is becoming conversant and masterful with the settings of meeting leadership. So for example, one of the most important settings as a leader is to make sure that you've clicked the button that says mute people upon entry. That way, new people, when they jump into your call, won't automatically distract. With Zoom, for example, when a new person jumps on the call and you haven't pressed that button and there's any noise on their side, the video is going to pop them to the front and whoever's talking is going to get removed from that front screen. You don't want that to happen. So mute participants on entry is a really important piece. Another thing that people are worried a lot about these days with Zoom and virtual meetings is security. And so a lot of people have put into place the waiting room. The problem is you have to make sure somebody is monitoring the waiting room. Otherwise someone might arrive to a meeting and end up waiting five or 10 minutes. It's happened to me. Another really important setting that a lot of people don't consider is if you're sharing audio and video and you choose share screen, there's a setting if you're going to be sharing audio and video where you need to optimize for audio sharing and video sharing. Otherwise, the audio and the video that you share in your, from your share screen is going to end up choppy and, and not very good quality. People won't be able to hear it or see it well. So there you have it. Those are the five big categories of meeting do's and don'ts. I hope this was helpful for you. And if you're running meetings as part of your business model, then check out my monetize your magic playbook at monetizeyourmagicplaybook.com. This is a way for you to monetize your passions, your gifts, your talents, and your strengths in a way that aligns with who you really are and what you really love to do. Enjoy.